Hello and welcome to Trady Business School, the podcast where we love to have real conversations, grounded conversations and conversations filled with maybe sometimes the stuff that not everyone talks about, but also to entwined with uh, uh, practical tips and things that you can really do and will get you thinking uh, that will help you to run your trade business uh, more enjoyably, to reclaim control and you know, get some profit along the way. I'm joined by the marvellous Michael McNish today. Hello, Michael. Hello. Hello. I am very marvellous today. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. <laughs> yep. So if you weren't sitting in a chair and on Zoom, you would have bowed. So that's wonderful. And uh, that's right. <laughs> great. So we're going to talk today about how the three most important things you can do to get your trade business back in control. And this is a topic that I think is really topical, pun intended, uh, at the moment, because I'm just seeing it, and you're probably noticing it as well, Michael, is there's so many conversations around uh, stuff that's going on in the world and change and external influence on businesses, and people feel out of control and everyone's sort of clambering for it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there was even a degree of struggle last year and we thought that that was kind of going to get away in 2021 would be a bit better and let's come up for the sort of the 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 sucker punch from behind really it's it's you know that, that, that's sort of put some more strain on our businesses at the moment so i'm seeing a lot of businesses scrambling and stress increasing and just a general lack of control and i think we just talked about this before michael often it's stuff changes outside of us and outside of our business and in the environment uh, and often what people do is jump to well, what can I do to re, you know to control the external world yet there's another way of looking at it isn't there there's lots of ways to look at it yeah there's so many ways to look at it and and you're right about the environment being a huge uh I guess a, a, a huge variable you know, like if you're working outside and it rains, well, guess what? You've lost control of the day. If you wake up in the morning and your um, two of your guys that you depend on to deliver a job quit or they're sick, well, guess what? You've lost control of the day. You wake up in the morning and the government has decided to lock down and you can't trade that day. You've, you've lost control. Um, you've got uh, bills from the, the tax office and a whole bunch of stuff. It's out of control. You don't know where it's at. I mean, it, it just gets chaos. It, you know, it's chaotic. Mm. And and I think in in a in a in a world that is chaotic, right? It, it is unpredictable. It is variable. Control is really appealing. You know, I think it's very very desirable and quite rightly so that we all want more control of our life. We want more control of our business and we want more control of our kids. Uh, if only it was that simple. <laughs> um, <laughs> no comment. And, and I guess we are simplifying it slightly by saying the three most important things. It's not the only things. Okay. So when we, when we talk about this today, we just want to present to you the things that are really, really important well, the th that we believe that you really want to focus on in order to get that feeling of control back on your business rather than your business controlling you you controlling your business mm. in, in irrespective of what's happening yeah and so the first one that we'll talk about is money um and before i jump into that in a little bit more detail um notice that it's not something new it's not something shiny and that you haven't heard of before. And that's what you're going to notice about these three things is that the answers lie in what you already know and what you are probably, and I'll just say this, what you are probably already avoiding in yeah. some way, in some way. So by money, I mean, do you uh, look at your banking, finance and accounting software every week? Do you know your critical numbers? Do you know your profit? Do you know your revenue? If I was to pull any of you, if you were just imagine for a moment, all of you listeners, I could just, you know, snatch one of you off, off mute for a moment and say, you know, what's your revenue this week? Yeah. How many new clients did you sign? 
Right. What percentage of your revenues is, is spent on labour? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any of those those numbers, um, at, would you know those answers? Mm-hmm. Now, if you paid attention to and spent some time, invested time in uh, being across those, even if potentially you felt you didn't fully understand what they all meant, but even if you knew those numbers, you would be in a very powerful position. Have you, have you ever tried to fly a plane, Miranda? Yes. You have tried to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. Like that's really awesome. Like I didn't know that about you. That's so cool. I didn't take off. I was flying it in the air. In fact, I was handed the wheel oh, in Africa, that, in Africa of all places. You cool. want to fly the plane, but I, he did say the takeoff and the landing were the most complex parts. But overall, the middle part was quite simple. And we can probably use that analogy here. But you, you can't learn to fly a plane by not knowing. <laughs> Well, if you want to get, that's right. I mean, if you want to get that plane under control, I mean, you don't want an out of, out of control plane when you're in the cockpit, you know, you want to make no. sure you've got this thing sorted out. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to rely on your instruments and your gauges and your numbers and, and the dials and the, you know, you've got to understand where that's at, where, where you are. So there's a yeah. GPS, like where, where, where am I positioned? How high am I? Uh, when do I need to do what? And so you're either blindfolded and completely oblivious to what's actually going on or you're in control like it, you cannot be in control of a plane without understanding what the dashboard is telling you, mm. you and which numbers to pay attention to you, you don't know what you're looking at like you're winging it you know right. and i don't think anyone has ever been like super successful in anything winging it no so if your business was a plane and you were handed the 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 wheel at the wheel, what are those things called? The little steering thing. Oh, no, it's, it's, called the, it's called the steering wheel. Gears. <laughs> the steering wheel. So for all of you um, uh, <laughs> aviation experts out there, feel free to have a good laugh and pop in the comments below the actual Correct name what, what's the of word? the thing that steers a plane, <laughs> the stick that whatever. Anyway, the bit that turns it. So if some, if your business was a plane and you were in the seat and somebody handed you the steering wheel and said, "Fly it and land it." Would you be able to? Would you know what those dials meant? And really, that's what you're doing at the moment if you are not across your numbers. Um, Now, you probably weren't taught uh, many. Um, I'd say the majority of everybody is not taught certainly how to to understand business numbers, certainly not in school. Uh, You learn your technical skill. Um, and I've seen many, many people when they, they they start up their trade business is often it's a partner, potentially a wife, who runs off uh, immediately. And it's a wonderful thing to do uh, some and a, a short accounting course um, or to do the training linked to their accounting software, which I thoroughly advise. Uh, there is more to more to it than that, but that's an amazing starting place. But if your business was a plane and you were handed that steering wheel, would you know? Would you be able to take it through a bit of a bumpy landing at least, or would you just drop out of the sky? And the control that you experience is clarity. You know, so you know the the number of clients that are tradies that we've worked with who had no idea how their business was performing with, with the, on the money side of things. And once we showed them and helped them to understand them and read them and then make decisions based on that, they were so much more empowered in order to feel like they've gained control because they understand what they're doing. So the first most important thing in your trade business is money or your finances. The second most important thing is time. Right. And the funny thing about time is that it goes really quickly. <laughs> we don't have a lot of it, but we've all got the same amount. Mm, right. Mm. So h- how does how do we manage time, Miranda, to get back more control? Yeah, great question. To manage time, you first, first, first uh, must know where it's going. And I think many of us intuitively know, and you've heard, you know, ever heard of people say, well, geez, my, the day flew by, but I'm not quite sure what I did. Um, that's it that's that's where the answer is is record what you've done now there's a free tool around here somewhere called the task audit 
Um, it is uh, eerily simple. Uh, do not let that fool you. It is extremely powerful and we use that in our programs regularly. I, we use it ourselves right through to the higher levels of our program, coaching programs. Um, to measure and know where your time is going and then make a series of decisions over whether or not you're going to delegate what that task is, whether or not you're going to outsource it potentially, continue it or just stop it. Um, and so knowing where your time is going and actually turning and facing that is, is one of the pow most powerful things you can do. Often people avoid it. They just keep running that hamster wheel. Um, and I dare say that there's an element of that hamster wheel. If you're on it, that you're just like, I'm, I'm done. I'm over this. Absolutely. Con control over what you're doing because you feel like maybe you're forced to do all these things. Um, or you feel like I'm just so busy. I'm so busy. I have no control over my day. I can't do the things that I want to do. I can't spend time with my family, my, my kids, my friends. Um, the business controls me. So what the, the, the task order enables you to do is to gain back control. You're actually getting out of your head, get the emotions away, park them to the side and going, all right, here's, here's the reality. Here's what's actually going on. And then what can we do? We can make decisions based on what we see, which is just like we talked about money. You can't make decisions on your finances without seeing them. You've got to look at them. You can't make decisions on time without seeing where your time goes. And so I guess it's a common thread here, Miranda, isn't it? In order to gain mm. back control, really measuring, measurement is, is yeah. the key. Measurement and, and acknowledging and not avoiding, um, noticing when we make excuses for, oh, I don't have time to manage look at what my time's doing I don't have time to open my zero it's fine it'll be there tomorrow um just notice when you're making decisions to avoid uh so the third thing is systems so uh, we've talked about systems before but still yet we would say that it's one of the top three things to regain control because if you can create that consistency and certainty, if you can have the confidence that your team knows what it's doing in the same way every time, if your client experience is consistent, uh, then that frees you up and it does give you control to face the things that do require your attention and your attention only. So it helps you to be smarter. You can um, say people as well instead of systems, but effectively the systems is for managing people. Yeah. It is effectively the thing because uh, how many of you have that experience where you're, hot, you're you're building your team and instead of out of control, they're doing they're doing things that you don't want them to do. You've lost control of your team. How do you bring that back in? How do you know, like have that sense of clarity and certainty? Again, documenting, it's, it's measuring. It's measuring yeah. the, the steps that someone needs to take in order to get the result. And so it's very, very similar to tracking your money, tracking your time, and then tracking how you do what you do. How do you want them to, to, to do the task? Um, and it, it's so essentially important. Like if, if you don't have systems, you're winging it. Yeah, absolutely. And they do go almost in that order in a way. Well, you know, time and money could be a bit interchangeable. However, um, we often get asked, which system do I write, write first? Where do I start first? And that is, where is, where can you reclaim that time the fastest? If you're repeating a task or you want to delegate it, then you start there and you systemize that because that gives you back the control and it also empowers your team. So very much is it helps you with all of that. You know, one of the things I got asked the other day was, you know what, I don't have time to even create the system to then train people to do it. It's like, well, would you like to spend 15 minutes saving yourself an hour or would you like to spend an hour saving yourself 15 minutes 100 mm -hmm. times over? Mm, good question. Um, a CFO who's a friend of mine based in Perth, a CFO's chief financial officer, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, um, and he would do his um, presentation about money and he would show a, a glass, of, uh, just an empty glass, and fill it with water. And when it filled to the top of water, it's at 100% capacity. So, like, Think about your workload, your full capacity, and then you tap it just with a finger and it spills. That's what it's like. You've lost control of the water. You, you, you're a mess. Whereas if you offload 20% of that water out the glass and you tap it, it doesn't spill. Nice. 
there we go. So we don't want spilled water. Yeah. <laughs> or milk. <laughs> You know, we, we don't want to cry over the spilt milk, but, you know, um, but in order to offload that, number one, be across your money. You need to understand what you're going to offload from your time, right? And the way you offload it is by building those systems. Yeah. Yeah. Three um, simple, possibly slightly unsexy things, the things that we often want to avoid. Uh, the answer is not to regain control is not what you don't know about it's what's right under your nose and uh, applying yourself to those three things um, if you've got any questions about how to do that pop them in the comments below reach out we're more than happy to talk have a look somewhere around here will be a link um, you'll be able to find the uh, the task audit which is a really powerful tool um, and and focus those three things money awesome. time and systems I love it. Well, I'm going to get off this uh, episode and go make some money, time and systems. <laughs> love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's uh, been great chatting. Have a wonderful uh, afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you are. And uh, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Great. Bye-bye.